Okay, so we're going to have a look at the relationship between convex sets and convex functions. And in particular, we're going to build up to a really satisfying the result, the fact that the set of convex functions is itself kind of a convex set. We'll make that more precise later on. But just to start with, what is a convex set? You can sort of think of this pictorially as, basically, if you're in 2D Euclidean space, you've got a convex set if for any two points in your space, you can draw a line between them, and that line is contained within the set too. Whereas, for example, for this crescent moon shape, you can see this line isn't contained within the set, so this one isn't convex, whereas your kind of blob shape is convex. So this is your sort of intuitive picture. But then we can generalise this to actually, here C can be any subset of a real vector space. And this is a really fancy way of saying that for any two points in your set, the line segment between those two points is also contained within the set itself. And you can sort of picture this if you imagine maybe you've got some position vectors p and q, and the line segment between p and q, if you start off, for example, when s is 0, you're at the point q, and then when s is a half, you're at the midpoint between p and q, and then when you get all the way along to s is 1, you reach the point p there, and everything in between is this nice line segment between the two. So if this line segment is contained within your set c, which is part of some sort of real vector space perhaps, then your set C, you can call this convex. So what is a convex function? Well, this is kind of related. So we say that F, so here if F, this is mapping from some sort of real vector space to the reals, and we say that F is convex if for all X and Y in your vector space, and also for all S between zero and one, so you're seeing a lot of the same structure as in this definition, but then instead of something being contained within a set, we now need to satisfy a certain inequality. So you need f of sx plus 1 minus s times y. This needs to be less than or equal to s times f of x plus 1 minus s times f of y. So this is a little bit strange, but it's, it is kind of connected. And if you imagine maybe our function f is mapping from the reals to the reals, so if you have a look at the graph of your function, it looks something like this, and you can make sense of the definition sort of pictorially. So if you imagine you've got your points x and y here, then what we're saying is that f of some point between x and y, so basically the height of this point, is less than or equal to this point, which is kind of the height which is between these two. So that might be perhaps this point here. So what we're saying is this point here is lower than this point here. And sort of more generally, you can say for a convex function going from the reals to the reals, this kind of chord between two points always lies above the rest of the function. Then another nice property of a real valued mapping from the reals to the reals convex function is that the area, this sort of region above it, is always itself a convex set. So what we'll do is, in a moment, we'll, we'll try and prove that the set of convex functions from a certain kind of fixed vector space or it could even be from a convex subset of this vector space, we're going to show that this set of functions is itself a convex set. But just before we do that, we'll, we'll sort of build up a bit of intuition, so I've got some nice animations to show you. So for our first example, we're just going to look at two really simple convex functions. So f of x is x squared, and g of x is e to the x. And in order for some sort of result like the set of all convex functions from the reals to the reals, in order for that set to itself be convex, what we're really interested in is basically these functions form a vector space. You've got your notion of scalar multiplication and addition. And we're interested in s times f plus 1 minus s times another convex function g. If this resulting function is always convex for all s between 0 and 1, then you can say that the set of convex functions from the reals to the reals is itself convex. So we'll have a look at what happens as s varies between 0 and 1. So basically the function you're looking at, is it starts off when s is 0, you're just looking at e to the x, which is g, and then this is going to morph into x squared gradually. So if you have a look here, you can sort of convince yourself that f and g, these are both convex, this region above them is a convex set. And then let's watch what happens as we gradually change the parameter s. So we start off at g, and this gradually turns into x squared, and then we just go back from x squared gradually to e to the x once again. And you can see at every stage in this process, and we can watch it as we go through it again, you can see at every stage this function 
the resulting function also looks like a convex function. And here are another two nice examples of convex functions. We've got f of x is x minus 5 all squared. We've got g of x is e to the x squared over 10. So if you have a look at the graphs of each of these functions, you can convince yourself that they both look like they're convex. You could do this algebraically if you want to prove it more rigorously. And we're interested again in s times f plus 1 minus s times g. So as s varies, we start off basically with the function g, and then we're sort of gradually adding a greater and greater contribution from f and a lower and lower contribution from g until we reach s is 1. And then at this point, the animation loops back around and we start going back towards g. And I think what's really interesting about having the animations here is if you look at the point where f and g intersect, you notice there are sort of resulting function. For whatever value of s we have, our resulting function always seems to pass through this point. I think this is really interesting, because if I hadn't done the animation, I probably wouldn't have picked up on this. But it's not particularly difficult to kind of realise. If you have f of a is equal to g of a at some point a, then have a think, what happens to s times f of a plus 1 minus s times g of a for any value of s? Well, you know that g of a, this is just equal to f of a. So you've got s times f of a plus 1 minus s times f of a. And then your s and your minus s, these cancel, giving you this is equal to f of a. This is actually also equal to g of a too. So now let's actually prove our main result here, which is that basically the set of all convex functions mapping from some real vector space v into the reals is itself a convex set. So how on earth are we going to prove this? Well, it's actually quite a simple sort of case of following all the definitions. However, it is a little bit fiddly. So let's think, what do we need to show? You want to show that basically for all f and g, which are convex functions mapping from v into the reals, we need to show that for all s between 0 and 1, the function s times f plus 1 minus s times g, if I denote this as h small s just for brevity there, this needs to be convex too. So basically we need to show that this line segment, as you vary s, all of these functions between f and g are also convex functions. So what does it mean for h s of x to be convex for all s? So you need for all s, and you also need for all t, so introduce a new variable here between 0 and 1, and you also need for all x and y and v, so for any points in your vector space, we need the following inequality to hold. You need h s of t times x plus 1 minus t times y, this needs to be less than or equal to, you take the t and the 1 minus t outside the function, so t times hs of x plus 1 minus t times hs of y. Okay, so to actually prove this now, what we're going to do is we'll just write out what on earth does this mean, and then hopefully we can use the fact that f and g are convex to our advantage. So hs of tx plus 1 minus ty, if we write this, in its full sort of expanded form, hs, remember, is s times f plus 1 minus s times g, so you get s times f of tx plus 1 minus ty, and then also you've got plus 1 minus sg tx plus 1 minus ty. And now, because f and g are both convex, we can just look, read this off straight away from the definition here. You can take the t and 1 minus t's outside the function and split these up. So we get the inequalities, you've still got a factor of s here, so you get s times t times f of x, and then you've also got s times 1 minus t times f of y. And then we get two more terms from the fact that g is convex, you get 1 minus s times t times g of x, and then you also get a 1 minus s, 1 minus t, g of y. Okay, so this is a bit of a mess now, but we can group some things together. So if you spot here that these two terms have both got a t in them, so if we join these together and we factor out this t, and what we'll do next is we'll join these two together, we'll factor out the 1 minus t, and this will get it in a nice form that will be particularly useful. So take out the factor of t, what have you got here? s times f of x plus, and then 1 minus s times g of x. Okay. 
And then if we take out the factor of 1 minus t from both of these terms, so you've got a plus 1 minus t, and then in the brackets you've got s times f of y plus 1 minus s times g of y. And this is particularly nice because hopefully you can spot here that s f of x plus 1 minus s g of x. Let's go back to the definition. What was this function hs? Well, this is s times f plus 1 minus s times g. So all we've really got here is t times hs of x, and then here s times f of y plus 1 minus s times g of y, this is just hs of y. So you get plus 1 minus t hs of y. And then if you check back, what did we want to show? Well, we wanted to show that hs of tx plus 1 minus ty is less than or equal to this term, and this is exactly what we've shown. We started with hs of tx plus 1 minus ty, We've shown that this is less than or equal to t times the function at x plus 1 minus t times the function at y. So therefore, we've shown that for any two convex functions, mapping from v into r, this sort of linear combination of them for any s, so any function on this sort of generalised line segment between f and g, this is also a convex function. And then you can conclude that the set of all convex functions mapping from v into r is itself convex.